Foraging for me is uh, just a very natural thing. Whenever I walk around, food is my passion, so I can't help you know, looking at all this nice salad everywhere. It stems from like a lot older, when, you know, back to when there was a farming community and people had to find their food in, in nature. Uh, but I think it just adds another dimension to, to being a chef or being a cook. Being outside, you know, not in the kitchen, slaving over a hot stove, so to speak. You can actually get out there and, and see what's going on and that's just as much of an important part of the process as, um, as anything else. In the restaurant industry where you work 18 hours a day, it is a chance to mentally refresh. It's a chance to get outside and, and get in touch with nature. And yeah, if you can take the dogs with you, it's great. It makes it a bit more entertaining. In a restaurant context, um, I guess before foraging became a real player in the game, um, we're really reliant on suppliers. Um, basically, you contact a supplier, you ask for an ingredient, you get a box of that ingredient, and you have no contact with it before um, it's in your kitchen. Um, so you have no chance to really determine what you're going to be working with. You're just really reliant on, on other people. Wellington being what it is, um, there's so many little microclimates, little areas that are wind affected or, or sun affected or time of year changes differently depending on what part of Wellington you're in. The weather here is quite variable. So what that does, it gives us little pockets of different ingredients, um, but it also gives us a really clear reflection of seasonality. We try to use forage ingredients in, in a lot of different ways, whether it's food dishes or drinks. You know, the ramen shop seaweeds um, play a large part, being a Japanese-based cuisine. Here at Hillside, um, we like to use a broader range of ingredients that reflect the seasons. Um, at the moment, we're using kawakawa leaves in one of the uh, fermented non-alcoholic drinks that we make for, um, for tasting menus. We're quite fortunate in terms of you have customers coming for an experience and they kind of understand that we do things differently. So they embrace that these different forms of food comes in and things like that. What we do have is we make sure all our staff have a really strong knowledge of the ingredients that we're using, especially the forage ingredients, where they come from, how they're processed. And that assures people through the dining sort of experience that they're getting something that is edible and safe and all those sort of things, but they're also getting to experience something that's quite unique and, and interesting. So when it comes to using um, the forage ingredients, we kind of look at it from two different points of view. We've got the small leaves and delicate plants and things like that that we try to pick daily, and then they'll go on the dish that day, and that's it, and then we start again the next day. Things that grow in bulk in a certain time of year, like mushrooms specifically, we try to pick as many as we can without sort of um, destroying nature. Um, we get as many as we can and we do things like pickling and dehydrating and um, turning them to powders and, and then we can use them throughout the year to add that extra little bit of flavour to a dish. Often if they have like some, some off flavours but you still like them, sauté them, maybe we turn them into an oil if they're really powerful, like kawakawa, horopito. There's a, there's a lot of options of how to, to go for it, but I prefer the, the raw ingredients. Getting into foraging is really easy. Basically, it's going for a walk and, and just looking what's around you and seeing what's there and, and picking up a few bits and pieces, probably taking a bag with you helps. It, it's, what's more important is your bit of research beforehand, understanding what ingredients are and what's available and what you can take, what you can't take in the process of using those ingredients. There's some really great resources out there um, in terms of what's safe and, and easy. Uh, the best one is to talk to other people and find other people that go out foraging and, and tag along. Facebook has foraging groups, uh, there are books you can get at the bookstore. I've used one of them myself about native edible plants. If you really want to experience something unique in food, um, something that's local, that's free, get out there and forage, it's fantastic. You get some fresh air, and it's just a really enjoyable way to be connected to the food that you're eating. <laughs>